We're here today to talk to the Solos, a sound design studio specialised in training music for films such as Predator, Alien and the Marvel series. We want to get some insight into how they make sounds to these trailers, but also to see how they made sounds for our new granular synthesizer Ashlight. Let's go. I'm Andre, founder of The Solos, an international collective of composers and sound designers. Uh, we are working on music and creative sound design for uh, movie trailers like Dunkirk, Captain Marvel, Dark Phoenix. The Solos is, is a playground of ideas and developing original and daring ideas. Uh, we always try to get the people and the companies that we work with uh, to do the same thing, so that in the end, uh, the product that we're working on, whether it's 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 a movie or it's uh, it's another library, is original and daring. Our signature sound that we pride ourselves on is dark and gritty. That's that's actually what we do. There always has to be a movement in the sounds. The sounds, even if it's a small hit, have to travel from A to B. There has to be some kind of movement and that particular movement uh, has to, to, to grab you. If I want to make a trailer sound which, is, which has massive impact, the one thing I do is I make a lot of different layers. So you make sure that you have the complete spectrum, this complete audio spectrum available. So you have your low sounds. You have your mid sounds, you have your high sounds. Um, and, and to have uh, a nice till with it as well. So if we get an assignment, we never know up front if something is going to get used for trailers. Uh, so it can be an assignment from a whoosh, from a stinger, from a riser. I think half a year or a year ago, I got a call from Andre say, he said, um, one of your sounds uh, was used in Greyhound, the trailer of Greyhound, which was awesome, <laughs> but we never know up front. So I think one of the most challenging things for making sounds for Ashlight was to create samples that have sonic or spectral or dynamic interesting content on a very small surface. We went about, I went about the house trying to bow pretty much everything I could find. Uh, a vase, uh, cymbal, uh, instruments, whatever, but also my, my heating radiator, um, which was interesting. Um, we use rub mallets, which are these like little rubber balls that you drag across the surface and then it resonates. I used a vibrator that uh, I borrowed. <laughs> uh, it's a funny thing, if you put a vibrator on, on textures, then you get these interesting, sometimes interesting harmonic resonances. We use some of that stuff. Obviously, Ashlight works perfectly in the cinematic genre, but um, I personally, um, I make a lot of electronic music as well, and I love using Ashlight in an electronic context. Um, so, like really dark and deep electronic techno music, I think it's really well suitable, except, especially because there's the arpeggiator um, in it. It just makes it so easy to just put some uh, beats underneath and it immediately lifts it up to a to a higher level, I think. So yeah, the basic sound of, uh, of this track called Ascent um, is uh, a snapshot called Evelyn Tensions. Um, and it's a mixture between an arpeggiated synth sound and uh, an organic pad sound. Um, so it sounds like this. This sound is made up, you have two layers in, in, in Ashlight, the grain layer, the sample layer. And the great thing is that now Ashlight has a arpeggiator. In the sample layer, there's this synth sound and it's a multi-sample, so there's different recordings of the same synthesizer. So you can actually see in the sample layer that it has like different samples, you see the waveforms. Uh, the arpeggiator is, is pretty great, I mean it sounds really dynamic, you can have velocity differences uh, within the layer. Then, of course, one of the most important sounds, especially for the beginning, is a piano. So we have actually two pianos in this track. So the first is just almost a normal piano, I would say. 
So the only thing with this piano is that I played around with the cutoff frequency of the piano. There's a piano in the sample layer, and then there's some other like typical ash light sound in the grain layer. To weirdenize a, um, uh, a piano sound, and I think it's, it's really, really interesting because in the track it sounds like a real piano, but if you listen closely it has these weird artifacts and it, it sounds really uh, otherworldly, I would say. There's a second piano in there as well. It's used for the, the top lines to make the, 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 pad, uh, like the, the, the piano chords more interesting. So and it comes in at, at this point and it's a, it has a fade in. And this sound actually exists of two different pianos. We have a piano in the sample layer, a soft felt piano, which is a traditional felt piano. And then on the grain layer, there's um, uh, a source called Piano Fragments Bulky. It's a weird sampled piano and the, it, it takes grains from this, uh, from this sound. And as you can hear, it's not really in tune with the rest of the, the song to create some interesting overtones. And I kind of like these kind of things that seem to go wrong and then go to the, the normal chords again, but they're definitely not in tune with the rest of the, of the song.